All right. Okay. Well, um, happy new year. Welcome back to school, everybody. Um, I get, I mean, I mean, welcome back as, as far as whatever back to school means. Um, normally like we're back on campus and, and it actually feels like you've come back to school, but you're, you know, you guys are wherever you are. So, um, but thank you. Thanks for, uh, logging in. Thanks for uh, showing up and, uh, and thank you to everybody who's turned on your cameras. Um, I appreciate, I really like seeing your guys' faces. It makes a big difference for me. Um, you know, I have to uh, just say thank you again for um, just kind of your flexibility in terms of like, I know the lecture times were changed upon you uh, kind of at the last minute. I had some uh, personal stuff going on and so have to uh, kind of have to rearrange my schedule here. So. Uh, so we're meeting at um, 5 and 6 p.m. And, uh, and so I appreciate your flexibility. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about, you know, today, um, I'm not, I'm not going to do any like formal lecture content. We'll go over kind of the syllabus, a lot of course policies. I don't know, but it might be the most important lecture or uh, lesson of the, uh, <laughs> of the quarter. So, um, but anyway, um, we'll go ahead and get started. It's, uh, this is it, stats 1028, wait. You guys can see my screen, right? The it's got the uh, the thing. Yeah. All right, good. Thumbs up. Okay, great. Um, okay, so it's got my slides. Introduction to computational statistics with R, stats one hundred two A. My name is Miles Chen, and uh, and yeah, Department of Statistics, Week One, Monday, UCLA. I guess I guess that's all information you know. Um, so uh, here we go. All right. Oh yes, Happy New Year, Happy twenty twenty one. I forgot I put this slide in here, but I'm glad it's here. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I've got a lot, I've got high hopes for this year. I mean, I had high hopes for last year and well, you know, we got through it. So, but anyway, 2021, I hope it's way more awesome. Um, okay, so let's talk about our syllabus. So I posted the syllabus. Um, I imagine some of you read it, probably some of you haven't. So. Uh, here's just some highlights, and uh, and please do take the time to uh, read through the uh, the syllabus um, this week. Um, I know it's like nine pages long. It keeps getting longer every single quarter because I keep adding more and more stuff. All right. Oh yes, my name is Miles Chen. Uh, here's my email address. Uh, everything's going to be on CCLE and Campus Wire. I think most of you are on Campus Wire. Uh, I sent out invitations to everybody, at least based on the emails that you had listed on CCLE. Um, if you're not part of Campus Wire, definitely uh, you need to join. Um, I'm going to have office hours on Wednesdays before class from 4 to 4.50, Fridays uh, basically at noon, Saturdays, uh, and then Saturday mornings at 10, and then also by appointment. Uh, when you message me, um, you can call me Miles, that's totally fine. You can call me Professor Chen, Dr. Chen, whatever you're comfortable with. If you do send me an email, the only thing I don't like is getting emails that just say, hi, you know, can you do this? And it just feels a tiny bit rude, you know, at least like, <laughs> at least call me by my name. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, you know, I prefer not to be referred to by my last name. You know, I know you, students talk about their professors by their last name, but it's kind of, I don't know. In Harry Potter, they always, you know, when Harry's talking about Professor Snape, he said he, when he talks about Snape, you know, Dumbledore always corrects him and says, you know, Professor, you, Professor Snape. Well, I know. Okay. Anyway, sidetrack. Okay. Um, grade breakdown. Okay. So this is this adds up to one hundred, right? Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, this is how we're going to do the grades. Okay. 10% uh, lecture viewing quizzes. I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, homework, you got six assignments, 6% each. None of them are going to be dropped. Okay, so make sure you do all of your homework. Um, campus wire, uh, you'll get points for participation. That, that's going to count for 4%. There's going to be a midterm and a final, and those will be 25% each. Um, and so that's, uh, that's how we're going to do uh, your grades. Uh, I do a straight scale. Okay, I think this is pretty standard. Um, to get a C, you need a 70%. And then, you know, the, the break points are at the, the threes and the sevens. 
So 77 and higher is a C plus, 87 and higher is a B plus, you know, and then for a flat B, you need an 83, for a flat A, you need a 93 and so on. Um, I don't curve grades. I don't believe in curving. Um, I feel like it's my responsibility to write a good exam. And, uh, you know, if I do a bad job writing an exam, then um, sure, I'll consider um, making some adjustments. But I don't, I don't believe in the idea that your grade in a class should depend on how your peers did, okay? So I don't, um, how you do is how you do. You don't have to worry about whether, um, whether uh, your other peers did, uh, did well or poorly, okay? Um, is homework graded on completion or correctness? Definitely correctness, okay? Uh, we're grading on correctness, um, so anyway. Um, let me talk about uh, lecture viewing quizzes, okay? So I'm not gonna take traditional attendance and like I'm not gonna go down the list and uh, call off your names, but everyone is required to watch lectures. Um, and, uh, and so the viewing of the lecture is gonna be enforced through the lecture viewing quiz. And so let me see. Um, so if you go on to CCLE, this is what it might look like. And, and basically the lecture viewing quiz is like gonna be three multiple choice questions and there's no context to the questions. It, it's just A, B, C, D, E, okay? And, um, and there's no way you would know what the answers are unless you, uh, you attend lecture, okay? And so, you know, during the lecture, like right now, I will give you the first answer to week one Monday's lecture quiz. The first answer is B, B as in bear, okay? So write this down on a little piece of paper somewhere, okay? And just write down the letter, question one is B, B as in bear or ball or Bruin, whatever you wanna call it, B. And that's gonna be the first quiz answer, all right? And then, um, and I'll give you kind of quiz answers two and quiz answer three, like throughout the rest of today's lecture. And we're gonna just kind of do this um, every time there's lecture. And, uh, and so the only way you're gonna get the answer is by kind of listening and, uh, and that's it, okay? Um, and that's gonna force- uh, Professor? Yes, question. Uh, is there a time limit on the quiz or could we just have the quiz open for the full hour of lecture? You can have the quiz open the full hour, okay? There is a time limit and it, you have to take the quiz before the next session. So next session is on Wednesday. So you have to take the quiz before uh, Wednesday, like 5 p.m. or something, okay? And, uh, and that just kind of forces everybody to stay on track. Because I know how, you know, I've taken an online course and, you know, if, if all the videos are being recorded, there's this temptation not to attend live. And then like, and then you, you just don't feel like watching a lecture. And then it's midterm day and you're like three weeks behind on lecture and you try to have to, you know, binge watch <laughs> lecture videos. And it's the worst binge watching experience of your life. And so, um, so anyway, just these, these quizzes are open basically 48 hours or so and it just kind of forces you to at least spend an hour watching the lecture uh, at these regular intervals and, and that's it, okay? Um, just like any other quiz, you know, sharing the quiz answers with another student uh, is considered facilitating academic dishonesty, so don't do that, okay? Um, you know, uh, you guys are here in the five o'clock lecture, um, but if for whatever reason it's more convenient for you to attend the six o'clock lecture, you can do that. It's pretty much gonna be the same. I kind of just repeat myself in, you know, tell the same jokes and same stories and all of that. And, um, and, and I try to make them similar, but, uh, but yeah. Uh, and if you can't go live, uh, you know, it's being recorded and I'll post the, uh, the video up, okay? Um, one quiz will be dropped. Uh, and then if you just forget, you just forget, you just lose out those points. It's not a huge deal, okay? There's probably gonna be like 25, 26 of these quizzes. They add up to a whole of about 10 percentage points. So we're looking at about 0.4 percentage points per quiz. So if you miss one, it's not that it's not the end of the world. You'll just miss out on those points, okay? Um, okay, so we got that, right? The first quiz answer was B, B as in bear. Okay, all right, so we'll keep going. Um, homework, uh, so I'm gonna, you're gonna have six homework assignments, 6% each. 
Uh, you're, they're graded on correctness. Okay, so you want to make sure you do it correctly. Um, generally, I make my due dates uh, 6 p.m. Okay, 6 p.m. California time. Um, so wherever, whatever time that is for you, wherever you, whatever time zone you're in, just just make sure you turn it in at the at the right time. Um, there's a 10 minute grace period, and then I got kind of details on how the uh, uh, late policy works there. Okay. Um, if you need an extension for the homework, um, if you got documentation, I generally will grant kind of a 72 hour uh, extension automatically. Okay. You don't have to, if you've got documentation for it and you, and you can, if 72 hours is good enough, you don't even have to message me. Just, just basically tack on your documentation to your homework when you submit it. And, uh, and the grader will know that to uh, not dock you uh, for being late, okay? If you need more than 72 hours, uh, come talk to me. Um, I, I try to be reasonable, okay? Um, uh, but come to me during office hours. At, if you send me emails, like, um, I'm not really good at responding to emails, so uh, just, I get, I get so many emails a day and it, it's easy for things to get lost, okay? Uh, if you come to me in office hours, I'll, I'll be able to handle things quickly. Okay, um, when you come to office hours, introduce yourself every time. It, it's actually kind of nice having um, Zoom in this regard because everybody has their name labeled, uh, which is really nice. But, um, but do introduce yourself. Um, and I, I like when students come to ask questions and, um, and you know, feel free to approach me if you have questions about grad school and things like that. Um, and uh, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, the only thing that I don't really enjoy <laughs> office hours is like getting in arguments about like points. Uh, I get it. Like it's part of being a student, but, um, but that's like my least favorite. Um, but I'll do it if, if we have to. Okay. Um, you're going to be submitting your homeworks on grade scope and, uh, and you'll uh, you know, the graders will grade them that way. And it's, uh, yeah, if it's correct, you'll get your points. And if it's wrong, you'll lose some points and stuff. Um, you know, if you tried it and it came kind of close, you'll lose some points and things. So, um, so anyway, uh, you'll see it. And, and if you feel like something got graded wrong, you can, Gradescope has a way to ask for regrades and stuff. Okay. Um, Campus Wire, please participate in Campus Wire. Um, don't set up like a group chat or something like that, okay? Um, and uh, yeah, um, basically answer each other's questions. Be super generous with the um, upvotes and uh, and likes and things like that, okay? Um, you've got to, to get full credit for Campus Wire, you need 150 points. And if everyone's generous with the upvotes, it's very easy to hit 150 points, okay? But if everyone's like gonna be Scrooge McDuck with, with um, the, the upvotes, then it's hard. It's hard to reach those things, okay? But there's no reason, like it doesn't cost anybody any, anything <laughs> to hit the upvote button, okay? So just, just, be, just be generous, right? If it's a good answer, give it an upvote, okay? I mean, obviously if it's a bad answer, you know, don't upvote it, but um, but if you know if it's good, upvote it. Be generous, okay? And and it'll be easy to get 150 points. All right. Um, if you need uh something done, okay, I would say office hours is your best bet in terms of getting an immediate response. Okay. Any questions before we uh, go on? Okay. So a couple of people sent me messages in the chat here. It says, did you say homework was graded on correctness only? Well, I don't know. I mean, like. To get full credit, it needs to be correct. Um, if it's not correct, you know, you'll get partial points. Okay. So, all right. Any extra credit? The only extra credit is if you achieve Eagle status on, um, on Campus Wire. So, Campus Wire, if you like answer a whole bunch of questions and get a whole bunch of upvotes, you can achieve Eagle status. 
Um, and again, if people are generous with the upvotes, uh, a lot of people can achieve eagle status. And so if you get eagle status, you'll get an extra one, one percentage point in the um, in your uh, in your grade. But that, that's all I have for planned extra credit. Homeward, I don't know what homeward means uh, in, in this question. Okay, but anyway. Okay, any other questions? Are the exams on CCLE or on grade scope? Yeah, you know, I'm still planning how to do exams. So I haven't thought that far ahead. Okay, we got a midterm in week six. That's, uh, so I've got about five weeks to figure out how we're gonna do, um, do the exam. Are you allowed to unmute yourself? Yes, okay, as long as you're not disruptive. Okay, so feel free to unmute and ask a question. That's, that's totally fine, okay. It, are you guys only able to do direct messages to me? Oh yeah, look at this. Okay, sorry, that was my bad. I meant to, okay. All right, now when you chat, you can chat with everyone publicly. Sorry, that was my bad for having the, um, the configuration in the chat set up wrong. Okay, all right, then uh, let's keep going here. Oh yes, what is this class about? Okay, um, so I would say this class is is a good kind of foundations for data science, okay? And um, so there's this kind of diagram that Drew Conway made, and it says, and, and Drew Conway says, data science consists of coding skills, math and stats knowledge, and domain expertise, okay? And, uh, and <laughs> all right, so now we're throwing memes in the chat. Um, we've got uh, kind of this Venn diagram here, and, uh, and data science is kind of the overlap of hacking skills or coding skills, math stats knowledge and substantive expertise. And basically what this class is gonna give you is gonna kind of cover the coding part and the math and stats part, okay? And that's kind of what the stats major will be able to give you. We're not able to give you substantive expertise. And basically what substantive expertise means is like knowledge of the specific subject matter, right? So. Statistics is um, always kind of used in support of other studies, right? So you can do statistics on, say, uh, medical data, right? Like maybe you, you want to do some information, like research on kidneys and stuff like that. And so you'll get like in data on like kidney patients and things like that. And you can do some statistics on it, okay? Now, if you're going to do data analysis on kidney data, someone on your team needs to be an expert on kidneys and kidney function, okay? You cannot say I'm a data scientist and I can do any data set, okay? Because that's, that's a lie, right? You can't, if you have no idea, if you know nothing about kidneys and kidney function, then you have no business trying to just analyze data looking for patterns because you have no idea whether something is remarkable or unusual or if something um, stands out or not, okay? Um, you know, sometimes we do like these projects on different data sets for different classes. And, you know, there's a popular data set on Kaggle and it's like wine data, wine tasting data or something. And, you know, if, if you're not an expert on wine, I, I can't imagine what kind of analysis you can do with this wine tasting data, right? If you don't know the difference between like a Cabernet and a Merlot and a Zinfandel and things like that, like, what are you going to do? You're going to tell me that the wine is red and the wine is white. I mean, I could have done that just by looking at it with my eyes. So um, you need to have some kind of substantive expertise. It's just as the stats major, we cannot provide this for you because there's just too many subjects to apply this to. And so, you know, stats is a great major to kind of pair with a minor and something else like if you're into political science you know pair it with that or economics or some kind of other thing that you're interested in great right if you want to analyze sports data you should know something about the sports right all right so it says it seems data science is more overlap than machine learning from the graph i don't so so yeah so data science requires some substantive expertise okay um yeah, I mean, there's there's more, you know, machine learning is just kind of like, if it's pure coding and pure math stats knowledge, you know, kind of falls under the umbrella of machine learning, but there's a lot of stuff there. Okay. Um, so anyway, this class, Stats 102A, we can think of it as an introduction 
to the field of computational statistics and data science. Uh, what I hope is that it will prepare you for data science by further developing your coding skills in R. So everybody took stats 20 and um, and I don't know how long ago you took stats 20. Maybe it was just last quarter. Maybe it was like a year ago. Okay. Uh, whatever it is, there's going to be a lot of coding. Okay. And, um, and thematically, the course can kind of be split into kind of two parts. Uh, we're going to focus a lot on coding, advanced programming and coding stuff. And then there's going to be some basic methods on computational statistics where we're going to do kind of like randomization tests and root finding and things like that. And, uh, and so this is kind of going to form a foundational course, and then you'll go on and you'll take 102B or 102C. Uh, you don't have to take those in order. You can take 102C next and then 102B later, or traditionally people go A, B, C, but if you want to go A, C, then B, then, you know, there's no rule against that. Uh, and you'll do more coding and stuff there, okay? Uh, this is kind of the planned structure, okay? We're going to... Um, on Wednesday and Friday, we'll look at data structures and subsetting, and then weeks two, three, four, and five. These are kind of the topics I've got planned, and then uh, and then weeks six through ten. Uh, these are kind of the topics I have planned, and we'll uh, we'll approach those things. Okay. Um, I like to think of this class as kind of like a coding two <laughs> class. Okay, so I, you know at UCLA, in order to graduate, you have to take a class that fulfills a writing two requirement, right? And um, and in those classes, you know, it might be like a history class or something, but generally you probably have to write a whole bunch of essays in that class, I imagine, right? Have, has anyone already taken the writing two class, right? And you probably had to write like an essay almost every week or something, something around there, okay? You can kind of think of this as the equivalent, but coding, okay? Now, it, coding two is not like a requirement to graduate, but if you're gonna major in statistics, I'd like to think of this as, as that, right? And, and UCLA makes you take writing too. This is what they say on their website about writing too and why it's important to take writing. And it's basically um, writing is essential to thinking and learning and clear, concise writing is a key strength and blah, 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 right? And it's true, you, you need to be able to write. And as far as doing careers in data and stuff like that, coding is an essential skill, okay? Um, if, if you are not able to code, you're not going to be able to interact with data in like a truly kind of meaningful way using only just point and click interfaces, right? Like there's, you can do quite a bit with Excel and I don't know, SPSS and stuff, but you're going to be severely limited if you're unable to code. And so, so this class you can kind of think of as a coding two class. And that just means you can expect to have to write a lot of code in your homework, okay? And so you've got six homework assignments and they're gonna be lengthy coding assignments, okay? And um, that, that's how I like to frame it, okay? And so this brings me to kind of the topic of academic integrity and plagiarism. You know, it's kind of the talk that I gotta give at the beginning of the course. Um, and the truth of the matter is, is that a lot of, <laughs> for the lot of the assignments I give you, there's already some high quality code that exists out there that does exactly what you need, okay? Like I think in your first homework assignment, I say like, find the prime factors of a number, okay? If you say like how to do a prime factorization code, like there's gonna be like hundreds of results and some of them are gonna be really good and they're gonna do exactly what you need to do, okay? And you know what? If the goal is you just need to accomplish a task, then yes, you absolutely should use the package or the code solutions out there, right? If you need to create a neural network, there are packages that will make a neural network for you. And, and you should absolutely use the existing packages. Don't try to code up these things yourself, okay? But that's not the goal of this course. The goal of this course isn't so you can write a task to, or is, is so you can prime factor some numbers, okay? It's, it's, the goal is not to accomplish a task, the goal is to get you guys to be better code writers, okay? The goal is to improve your ability to code and learn and all of that stuff, okay? And, and I think this is very apt. I think um, the idea of no pain, no gain is something that is probably ingrained in us for, you know, as far as athletics 
and physical strength and things like that, right? So if you think about the gym, okay, when you go to the gym and you see people lifting weights, the goal of lifting weights isn't that the weights get lifted, okay? That's not the goal, okay? The goal of lifting weights, the reason why people lift weights is that the process of lifting the weights is gonna help someone gain strength, gain strength in their kind of muscles and things like that. And, and the idea of no pain, no gain is the idea that if you, the weight training doesn't result in kind of muscle soreness and tiredness, then probably the person didn't exercise hard enough. And, um, but if, you know, if, if they do result in muscle soreness, then, um, then the muscles will go through repairs and end up getting stronger, okay? And the same thing is kind of applies to coding, all right? If you don't struggle at all when writing the code, then that means your brain has no reason to try to make more connections, okay? What happens is that when you try to write your code and you struggle and you say, man, this is hard. How do I think about this? And you have to kind of think about it for a while and your brain is struggling and you're tired at the end of the exercise, okay? When you go to sleep, your brain's gonna go, man, we worked hard today. Can we do something better? Oh yeah, let's make some new connections in our brain. And you know what? You learn something and you get better the next time, okay? And that's, and that's you know, it makes sense for muscles and it, and it works the same way in your brain, right? So if you don't challenge yourself at all mentally, it, this class probably isn't, um, you know, uh, <laughs> you, you can't expect to uh, improve. But if you are challenged and you go, man, that homework was rough. I don't know if I can do another one. That's actually a good sign, okay? The, the, uh, the pain is a good sign, okay? Um, and so when it comes to plagiarism, okay? Plagiarism is like going to the gym and saying like, man, I really wanna lift these weights, but it's too hard. So I'm gonna ask this strong person over here, please lift the weights for me. And then you give yourself a pat on the back, okay? Um, yeah, that would be great if the goal was to have the weights lifted. But if the goal is for you to get stronger, having somebody lift the weights for you isn't gonna help you achieve that goal. And so as far as um, coding goes, um, you know, if the goal is to accomplish a task, sure, use some prepackaged code, use a solution that you find on Stack Exchange, okay? But if the goal is to help you learn and become a better coder, then you gotta do this yourself, okay? You gotta do this yourself. Um, and so, you know, I'm not like super vindictive about this kind of stuff, right? If, if a student plagiarizes, I think the students who choose to plagiarize, what they've done is they've confused the goal of the course, right? I, 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 don't, I think a student who chooses to plagiarize, what they have mixed up is they think the goal of the course is to get a grade, okay? Or at least to avoid a bad grade or something. And the goal of learning is secondary to the goal of getting the desired grade. But that I think that's mixed up, okay? The goal of the course is your learning, okay? That's why you're going to college. That's why you're paying all of this money and, you know, attending Zoom classes and stuff like that is because, is you, you know, part of you wants to learn so that you'll be, um, you know, equipped to go out into the job market and stuff, right? You know, and, and I get it. It's, it's like we're sending mixed messages because at the end of the day, you do get a grade in the course and, and, and those grades count for some stuff, but it's not, you know, it's probably not as important as, you know, a, a lot of people think they are. Um, and, and I guess the problem is, is at the end of the day, I've got too many students where I can't create some kind of individualized grading schema that says like, oh yes, you made progress, so good job. Um, and then, you know, what's, you know, having some kind of fair system where people started off at different levels and make different levels, you know, so it's hard. But, but I want you guys to focus, see the goal of the course as you're learning and judge your performance based on what, how much you've learned, okay? Um, so that, that's the goal of the course, okay? So as far as, you know, my expectations, um, I expect you guys to work hard I expect when you get stuck, you're not going to seek out solutions, okay? Or look at someone else's code, a current or former student. And, you know, and if you're not able to complete everything 100% by the deadline, just submit what you have and then be okay and accept the grade that you get 
you know, if you didn't complete the task to 100%, you're not going to get 100% on your grade, but you got to be okay with that, okay? And don't view this as a failure of you as a student or a failure of your coding abilities, but just this is an area where you can get better and, uh, you know, grow and improve, okay? So, so that's what we have. Um, you know, I, I do take issues of academic dishonesty and cheating and stuff like that seriously. And, you know, if I need to, we'll, we'll escalate it to the Dean of Students. It's, it's my least favorite thing to do. I don't, I don't like it at all. Okay. But, uh, but it, it's, uh, you know, if, if we have to do it, I'll do it. And, um, and there's a kind of a uh, collaboration policy and academic integrity thing that I'll have you guys sign and, and submit, um, you know, this, this week. Uh, it's, it's posted on CCLE. But, but overall, kind of the, the goal is, is your learning, not, and, and think of it that way. I want you to think of this, doing your homework as like going to the gym, okay? That the process of doing it is to make you stronger, make you a better coder, and that a struggle is a good sign because it means your brain is working hard and, and we'll, get, we'll get stronger in that regard. Okay. Uh, question, any advice to learn from strong coder? Like my advice as far as like how to get better at coding, um, you know, just like so many other things in life, it's like practice. The more you time you do it, you know, the, the better you're going to get, right? Like how do you get better at whatever, you know? <laughs> um, most of the time the answer is practice, okay? And, uh, and, and the same is with coding, okay. Uh, all right, so collaboration policy, uh, yeah, this is posted online, read through it. Basically, um, as far as Campus Wire goes, you can um, answer each other's questions. You have questions on how to do stuff, answer it. You just can't put code into your answer, okay? Um, so if someone says, well, how do, you, how do you do this? You can say, hey, you know, have you tried using this function? Have you thought about setting up a, a loop this way? All right, there's a lot of ways you can answer and help each other out uh, with ideas without specifically saying like, here's, here's the code that you need to write, okay? Um, so uh, you're, you're just some silly examples, right? So someone says, you know, how'd you approach problem two, right? Okay. And you can say, I created a for loop and within each iteration, I subset the vector this way and use the sort function and things like that. This is allowed, okay? Um, you know, something that would violate the policy is just like, let me show you what I did. And then you <laughs> show the actual code or um, uh, something like that, okay? Uh, let's see, we got a couple of questions. It says, if our code works, but isn't exactly what your solution is supposed to be, will we get full credit? Uh, I, don't, I don't know how to answer this question. Um, so I might specify the code needs to be done a certain way. And if you do it, don't do it that way, then you wouldn't get full credit. But um, if, the, if the prompt is just like write a function that does this and your function does that, then, then that should be fine, okay? Do I allow using outside libraries and homework? Um, I guess it depends. There will be certain libraries that I have you use and use that, but generally, um, generally, no, okay? Uh, generally, the, the, the task, again, the task is not to accomplish, or the, the assignment is not that you accomplish a task, right? So if, if the assignment says, like, write a function that's going to do this thing, um, yeah, perhaps there's a library that accomplishes it for you, okay? But is that going to help you learn? No, okay? So, um, there is merit to writing some of these things that already exist in, in that uh, it's, it's a learning thing, okay? So, okay, uh, you know, can I see how you did this to double check my work? Okay, again, you can't show your code, but you can say what you did verbally, all right? But then, you know, showing the code, that, that breaks the rules. Uh, if you have some kind of bug, you can say, this is the error I keep getting. And you can say, well, you know, that error op often pops up if you have this kind of thing or something like that. But again, showing the code, looking at each other's code, that, that breaks the rules, okay? Um, code that's not part of a homework, you can share, okay? So anything I put in my lectures, anything like that, yeah, go ahead and post code and stuff like that on Campus Wire, okay? But if it pertains to a particular homework problem, that 
that's no good. Okay. Is that right as far as how this works? So there's, there's a lot you can say and help each other out. Um, but uh, j just don't just don't look at each other's code. Okay. All right. Um, we got some time left, and I thought, well, maybe I'll talk about grades in life here. <laughs> so. Um, I don't know. This this may I don't. This could be a good lesson. Okay, so you're here at UCLA, and the reason why you got to UCLA is because you had good grades, either in high school or community college, right? You don't get into UCLA if you had bad grades, right? So so all of you got here because you have a history of good grades, and maybe at UCLA you've continued getting good grades, or maybe at UCLA it was like, pow, like your grades are the worst grades you've ever gotten in your life. Um, but you know, I understand where you're coming from and why grades feel so important because that was me also. In high school, I, I, I had good grades, right? But I wanna make it clear, your grades do not define you, right? It feels good to get good grades. I know what it feels like, right? And it feels bad to get bad grades, okay? Grades do play a role in like grad school admissions and things like that. But even then, they're not the most important thing in their life, right? No one looks back on their deathbed and goes, oh man, I wish I got an A minus instead of a B plus in that one class. Okay, no one's gonna say that, right? You're not even gonna remember like, okay. So, oh, okay, I wrote story time. Oh, I guess I'm supposed to tell you my story. So, you know, so in high school, I, um, I, I worked hard and I like, well, I don't know. Okay, spoiler alert, I was a big nerd and I, focused on grades and I did all kinds of stuff and I didn't go out partying because I wanted to get good grades and and I wanted to go to a good college and and I did I got good grades and I got into Caltech um, and that was like my dream school and I was like yes all of my hard work has paid off and then I I went to Caltech uh, in the fall of well, whatever year and um, and in my first quarter so Caltech's also on the quarter system, so I'm very familiar with the, the pace of things. And um, in my first quarter, I got like my first C ever. And I was like, oh my gosh, I got my first C. And then winter quarter came and I got my first D ever. And, uh, and, then, um, and then spring quarter, my freshman year, I got my first F. Actually, I got a bunch of Fs. I, I failed multiple classes and I got put on academic probation and and this was like a huge blow to me because throughout, like I had kind of a tied my identity to my grades. Like in, in high school, it was, it was like, it was okay that I didn't have very many friends because I had my grades to keep me happy or something. But then, you know, like I go to Caltech and all of, you know, my grades are the worst they've ever been. <laughs> I got my, you know, I failed a bunch of classes and I felt like a total loser. And uh, and I became depressed, and and then uh, and it was summer break, and the idea of going back to school and having to like dig my way out of academic probation was overwhelming. Uh, but then I was like, but then what's the other choice? Is dropping out of school, and and that was like heartbreaking to me because I was like, what was the whole point of all of this high school time where I worked so hard and didn't have any? Well, had a few friends, and. Um, and so, you know, my dad was, uh, my parents were very supportive. My dad was very, very supportive. You know, I, I didn't want to like disappoint my parents, but my dad said, you know, it, it's not worth it. It's not worth, you know, whatever dream of going to Caltech and all of that, it's not worth, you know, being depressed or, you know, having this, this outlook. So, so anyway, I, I dropped out of Caltech and I transferred to another school, um, things, uh, and I, and I did better. And, uh, and anyway, that that anguishing time, you know, I look back and and I'm thankful for it because what it forced me to do was I had it forced me to break my association of self to my grades, and and I was able to see myself as a person apart from my academic achievements, and um, and and anyway, that that was that was better for me, and you know, and things still worked out, you know. I, I graduated my new college, Kettering, and out in Flint, Michigan, and came to UCLA. And you know, now I have my dream job of uh, of teaching statistics to you guys. Um, so, so 
so things worked out even though I got a bunch of F's, you know, my freshman year in college and had to drop out of my dream school. Um, all of that happened. So anyway, um, this is my summary, and, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I, so I did let go of the dream, but, uh, but I'm thankful, you know, and it, yeah, it forced me to find my self-worth not in my grades. Uh, I eventually found it in, you know, my faith and my relationship with others. Um, and so, so that all had to happen. And um, it was hard. It was definitely hard at the time. Um, it doesn't feel good to, I remember when I got my F, one of the report cards. So Caltech is like this tiny school and the professors write like individual notes for each student. And one professor wrote, Miles, Miles is the weakest student in the class. And that, that, that's like, man, that's, <laughs> that's brutal. <laughs> so anyway, I was like, oh, that definitely didn't feel good. I, I thought I saved that report card somewhere, but I couldn't find it the other day. I was like, man, this is, I'm going to hold on to this. So, so anyway, it, uh, um, <laughs> that's all right. Thanks. That <laughs> All of these Fs are just triggering my memory of getting an actual F. So no, it's fine. Um, but anyway, it's, it's fine. It's, uh, it, it worked out. I, it was good not to, um, not to see myself through, through my grades. And so, um, anyway, I want to talk a little bit about work-life balance here. And this is just something that, um, you'll have to figure out on your own here. Okay. But I want to just give you a little bit of perspective. And I kind of think the time we have, there's 24 hours in a day. Okay. There's 24 hours in a day and I, I split kind of where we can put our energies into three kinds of categories. There's work, okay? And that's gonna be uh, your jobs and internships or your school and academic, other professional obligations. So, so right now you guys are students, so work is pretty much schoolwork, uh, but later on you'll, you'll find jobs and work's gonna be work, okay? Uh, second category is relationships. So whether that's friends, family, a romantic partner, other social obligations, those are your relationships. And then the third is yourself, okay? And that's gonna be care of your physical health, things like food, sleep, exercise, care of your mental health, sleep, play, and entertainment, care of your spiritual health, if you're spiritual or religious. Um, and there's 24 hours in a day, and it is not possible to give 100% to every single one of these categories. There's just not enough time. There's only 24 hours. You can't do 100% to all of these things. And so you have to pick and you have to prioritize and work-life balance, okay? So we talk about work-life balance being this mysterious thing, but it's not, okay? It's achieved by you consciously choosing what's important to you and devoting your times accordingly, okay? And in general, the more time you put into one category, you're, the more you're gonna get out of that category, okay? And the less time you put in, you're gonna get less out of that category, all right? And you can find satisfaction in life by accepting the natural consequences of whatever you have chosen to put less time into, right? So whatever you deprioritize, there's gonna just be natural consequences of putting less time into that thing. And if you can be okay with that, you can be satisfied in life, okay? So, you know, here's, a, here's an example, right? So let's say you start off, you know, you've got a group of friends and you, you know, you hang out with them and then one day you get involved in a romantic partner, okay? You find a, you, you enter a romantic relationship. And when you enter a romantic relationship, suddenly you're spending a lot of time with this one person and a lot less time with your original group of friends, okay? And the natural consequence of that, and it's not that your friends are being bitter and mean or something. I mean, it's possible that that's a possibility, but generally that's not what's going on is just the natural consequence of spending less time with your original group of friends is that, you're going to become a little bit more distant from them. You're not going to be as close to them as you used to. Um, they might not invite you out as much, or they might invite you and you decline and, um, and you, you're no longer part of the inside crew. And it can feel hostile, but it, it probably isn't, okay? It's just, that's just the natural consequence of spending less time with people because you're spending more time with this new romantic um, partner, okay? And, um, and so as people, you just have to choose what's important to you, right? And, and if you kind of can accept just the natural consequence of investing less time into something, 
uh, you can reduce your own feelings of just kind of bitterness or jealousy or whatever it is, okay? Uh, you know, just kind of a, a another thing, another example. So in the corporate world, you know, there's going to be some people, you're going to have colleagues that maybe dedicate all of their energies into the company, into work, okay? They don't have a life outside of that, right? They don't have friends outside of work. They don't have a family outside of work and things like that. And what's going to happen is these people just kind of get promoted. And it's not that the company is necessarily punishing people who have families and a life outside of work, but it's just, if you're the company, who would you rather promote, right? Your person is, you've got two people, one performs everything you've asked of them, and then they continue to stay and work and do even more. The other person does everything asked of them. But then after they finish all their jobs, they, they go and leave time and leave and go home with their friends and family and all of that stuff. Uh, the person who's going to get promoted is the one who doesn't have any friends and family and continues spending all the time at work, right? Because they're putting in a lot more energy. And so that's just what's going to happen. Um, and so you have to choose what's important to you, right? If climbing the ranks within the company is a lot more important, then choose to spend your time accordingly, right? Uh, on the other hand, if spending time with your friends and family is more important, spend your time accordingly. It's just there's natural consequences. You spend all your time at work, then your relationships with friends and family are going to just naturally suffer. If you spend more time with friends and family, then you might not get promoted as fast as the person who spent all their time at work. And that's just, that's just how, how it goes. It's not that people are vindictive. I mean, some people are, but generally it's just the more time you put in, the more you're going to get out. Okay. Um, Self-care is important. Oh, you know what? I totally forgot about the other quiz answers. <laughs> I got so into this thing. Okay. Uh, quiz answers. I'll just give you quiz answers two and three for today. Okay. So quiz answers two and three are C and D. Cat. C as in cat for two. D as in dog for number three. C as in cat for number two. D as in dog for number three. All right. If you guys get that, quiz answers two and three. Cat and dog. Okay. Um, Self-care is important, right? Don't neglect your physical and mental health, right? If you neglect the care of yourself, things are just going to operate a less than 100% efficiency. And the time you do put into work, school relationships and stuff like that is just not going to be productive, right? So if you don't get enough sleep, maybe a friend invites you out, you choose to go out and hang out with your friend instead of getting sleep. But <clears throat> if you're operating low on low sleep, you know, you're, you're probably not as much fun to hang out with, okay? You're gonna be a little bit out of it. You might fall asleep during the movie and your friend will be like, oh, this is not fun, okay? Um, maybe it would have been better to just sleep rather than accept your friend's uh, invitation, okay? Or uh, exams, you know, for exams, like if you choose to skip a meal and minimize your sleep in order to study, you know, you might end up getting sick or, you know, your brain just might not function as well. And maybe your performance on the exam suffers. So. You know, in, in those cases, maybe it would have been better just to uh, sleep and eat properly and, and not study as many hours, okay? And so when I tell you things like, you know, your physical and mental health is important, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm encouraging you to invest your time into things like exercise, sleep, and relaxation that boost your physical and mental health. Um, sometimes that means you don't have the time to finish your homework to 100%, okay? And the natural consequences of that is your homework grade is not going to be 100%, okay? But if you can kind of just embrace it and say, you know what, on this day, it was more important for me to get sleep. It was more important for me to just kind of take time to unwind. And that's why I didn't work so hard on the homework assignment. So I'm going to get a lower homework grade and I'm okay with that. Then you can be happy, right? You can, you can find satisfaction. You don't have to, you know, if you feel like you have to, if you have like because the homework is assigned you have to do it to 100% completion in order to get 100% on the grade because your life is about getting 100% you know it it can burn you out okay and and probably some of you have already suffered burnout because you felt like you had to do uh, all sorts of stuff okay uh, all right we got a question just curious what propor proportion do i split between work relationship and self uh well, I have a wife and two kids. And so as far as time for relationships in terms of family, that consumes a lot of time. Uh, work consumes a fair amount of time and self, like I like to get sleep. So I don't know, 
I, I don't know what the <laughs> right split is. Uh, I don't know. I think I've got a decent split, but I don't, I don't know. I haven't really logged my time. All I can tell you is like, I'm happy in the life. So, <laughs> so that's, that's good. Okay. All right. Oh, last warning. Okay. And it's 551. And so I know class, class is over here, but let me just say like one or two minutes here. Okay. So I, I want to just warn you of fruitless entertainment. Okay. Entertainment and fun activities are important for your mental and well, mental well-being. Okay. It's important to have fun. Like fun is an important thing of life. Okay. So, you know, I like hanging out with people, watching TV, movies, sports, playing board games, all of that stuff, playing video games, reading a book, listening to podcasts. Those are all great. Okay. And these entertainment activities, they should be a break from work. They should give you mental energy so that you can return to work do your homework and stuff in a good mood, okay? But there are some activities and even hanging out with certain people that can have the opposite effect, right? That they drain you of your energy after you do these so-called entertainment activities and stuff, right? And certain video games and apps and social media sites are designed to be addictive, right? So what they do is when you're doing these things, like you're playing a round of a video game and you win, you get a dopamine hit. And so you want to, keep playing, right? Even like something as dumb as like Candy Crush, it's like all these things shine on this app and you're like, yay. And then, uh, and it keeps you like playing on the next round and all of this stuff, or, you know, the thing scrolls forever and ever and ever and ever. Uh, and so you keep coming back, but after spending hours <laughs> of playing Candy Crush or whatever it is, okay? Um, you know, these, these multiplayer games that just have endless round after round after round after round, after spending hours of these things, you don't feel good about yourself, okay? You don't, um, it doesn't achieve the goal of giving you a break from work and giving you mental energy to go back to work in a good mood, right? So, so be aware of this and be mindful of this. There's a lot of things designed not so you, to make you happy, but designed to get you hooked, okay? And I want you to be aware of that and, and avoid those things um, or just just really limit yourself so that uh, because when you take a break from work, when you take a break from relationships and you do these entertainment things, it should truly be entertaining. It should truly energize you. Okay. And if you um, <laughs> and if it's not, then um, then it's not a good use of your time. Okay. Um, and yeah, data scientists did this. Yeah. Yeah, people have studied how to make things addictive because it can make them money. If, if something's addictive, you can you can make money off of that, but it, it's not good for your brain, okay? So I just want you to be mindful of that so that when you do entertainment activities, it, it actually makes you happy, okay? All right, anyway, um, thanks for listening to my spiel about all of this stuff. Um, I look forward to a good quarter with you guys. We'll, we'll start formally with the... Um, the programming and the coding and all of that on Wednesday. So, um, so look forward to a good quarter. Thanks for turning on your uh, your videos and stuff. I appreciate that. And um, yeah, so have a good evening, and we'll see uh, we'll see you guys on Wednesday at five. Thank you. Thank you.